All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, feast your eyes and tune your ears. It's that time again. We are live with another episode of The Authority Project. It's the video podcast streamed on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Periscope, where we talk to digital marketers, business coaches, and creators of all kinds on how they've built authority in their field and how you can mimic their success. Developing authority, building your audience, and attracting better clients to your own business. Now, without further ado, let's bring to the virtual stage your host, Brian S. Arnold. All right, we are in the building again on a Monday. On the virtual stage, I have my new friend here, Maxwell Ivy. I will put Junior on there as well, so I think that's important for you. How you doing, man? How you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. I'm I'm a little I'm a little intimidated by your intro, man. It's got me thinking. You know, uh, I feel like kind of the kid at the at the grown-ups table at Thanksgiving or something about now, but. <laughs> Oh, we are live. We are live, Max. So no worries. We, we're here. We got a little energy here. So you just got yeah. to bring it, my friend. You yeah, gotta bring we'll, it. we'll do that. We'll do that. That's not a problem. <laughs> That's not a problem. But yeah, I'm very impressed with what I've heard so far. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Appreciate that, sir. Uh, so we are here and Maxwell is here to show us a new word. That's not, that I, I'm not even sure if I know about this, but he's going to show us why inter- Dependence is more valuable than independence, and this is this is um, uh, as I sh showed in the description. It's kind of a thing that is an over overriding theme here, and what I share with the audience. I'm very glad to have you on here to discuss this with uh, with the audience here. So before we get started, please tell us, Maxwell, who you are personally and then professionally. Okay. Uh, they they kind of run together, so I'm just going to tell it as it is, and people can pick out the parts they think applies under each category. Awesome. Uh, I am a totally blind uh, guy from Houston, Texas. I grew up in a family of carnival owners, uh, planning to someday go into the family business and help run the carnival. I also grew up knowing that eventually I would uh, lose some, most, if not all of my vision to retinitis pigmentosa or RP. But I grew up in a family of supportive people who encouraged me to always think that I could do just about anything I wanted to. So uh, I graduated from a traditional high school and traditional college. I achieved the rank of Eagle Scout. I'm one of the few blind eagles. I helped run the family business for 15 years before my dad's death caused the show to go out of business. After a few years of working with my uncle's carnival and not being happy, I eventually suffered a health, health emergency where... I was forced to face my mortality and start taking care of my body and my physical health. At the same time, I decided to take what I had learned over the years in the carnival business and help other people sell used amusement equipment. And I started a website called the Midway Marketplace in 2007. I had to figure out a way to build that website, even though that was before WordPress, Wi-Fi, or Facebook. And I was a blind guy with no skills, no money, no experience, and no help. I really basically every day I was learning something new, trying to figure out a way that would work for me. And uh, in fact, because I was blind and couldn't use a visual editor, I had to teach myself hand, how to hand code HTML through an online tutorial site. Uh, I continued working to build that website. And then eventually people started saying, hey, Max, we're really inspired by the way you take on difficult challenges with joy. And we want you to, sh to hear more about your life as an entrepreneur who happens to be blind mm. that led to starting a second website as the blind blogger uh i've since written four books been on over 250 podcasts traveled the country solo spoken at national conferences and local advocacy groups i help other people get booked on podcasts and take advantage of other online opportunities so they can share their stories and finally i have a little show called what's your excuse <laughs> awesome awesome stuff i i love that title we already have a comment on, on here already coming up from um the audience here it says nice to meet you maxwell an amazing journey what an inspiration and i couldn't say anything better thank you so much andrea for that yeah thank um, you andrea i i'm floored by first of all i mean of course we, i mean you're blind but i'm floored 
how you can run a carnival and be blind. Can I just <laughs> can I just ask that question first? Sir, sure, how, sure. how, how how have you how are you were you able to do that? Right. Well, I, I didn't do it all myself. And plus, I was born into the business. My dad used to say that the only people crazy enough to be in the carnival business were those that were born into it or married into it. And so <laughs> he actually used to tell people the carnival business was the only place where insanity was not a disqualifier and might, in fact, be a prerequisite. Wow. Uh, wow. So it, he never really wanted us to have anything to do with the carnival other than to, to support us and and you know, hopefully help us get an education so we'd go do something else. But um, I had a brother in the business. Uh, I had, uh, a, you know, various people which would come in wanting to get work. One of the things about the carnival is it's a place where even now, as it's gotten more corporate, uh, people w that, you know, can't find work anywhere else will go there and look and look for jobs. And finally, we never had a really big carnival. We never had more than eight rides. We rarely had more than one ride that took a semi truck to move it. Uh, we were a small show competing with much larger carnivals with newer equipment, uh, scarier rides, uh, fancier games. You know, everybody else had more than we did. But, <laughs> you know, we we showed up. We worked hard. We treated people very fairly. There was many times in my lifetime where we would leave a town the year after they had a bigger carnival. And they would they would be scratching their heads wondering why we paid them more money. And the truth of the matter is, is some of those bigger carnivals paid for their equipment by not paying the committees their fair share of the gross. Mm -hmm. And my dad was just, you know, he was raised on the golden rule. He may not have spent much time in church, but somebody taught him the important lessons and he taught us. So, you know, with help from the family, uh, paid help. Uh, just a desire to, you know, to figure out a way to get to next week each week is is how I managed to do it. Um, I probably wouldn't have, you know, probably wouldn't have succeeded uh, if we had had to run a bigger carnival because a lot of the newer rides require, you know, people that can deal with electronics and hydraulics and computers. So, uh, and eventually, I was smart enough to realize the carnival days were behind me and go on to something where I'd have more control over what I'm doing and be able to also have more joy with what I'm doing. Right, right. So so what, what project are you currently working on right now? What's your current project? Uh, let's see. I uh, My immediate project that I'm working on that I actually you know can see happening soon is is my fifth book and the final book in a series that I've been writing on my on my travels. Uh, the most recent book in that series is called The Blind Bloggers, First Speaking and Signing Adventures, How You Can Conquer, Conquer Your Fears. So mm -hmm. I'm working on the third book in that series, but I'm also working on this other idea that I'm still trying to find somebody to help me with. I need a StreamYard producer, somebody who's willing to sit on the other side of the mic and make sure that the, the tech stuff runs and I nice. want to do a talk called Music and Motivation, where I would sing some songs and tell some stories and teach some life lessons. And I've got it pretty much figured out in my mind. It's just one of those things I haven't managed the tech side of it yet. So if one okay. of your listeners wants to is is just as you know as as crazy as I am, wants to be part <laughs> of something that, as far as I know, has only been done by one other speaker, then I would love for them to reach out to me, and we can we can take that crazy adventure together. And if it works. Who knows? I could be it could be something that makes me famous or that I get to, you know, maybe travel the world instead of just this country. Or it could be mm -hmm. something where you go, man, I had to do that. I had to get it out of my system. Didn't go like I wanted it to. It's done. But at least I did it. It'll be one of, you know, probably somewhere in between. But hopefully one of your listeners is the kind of person who will, you know, reach out to me and we'll we'll get that done. Awesome. Now that and I'm glad that you put that out there. So you heard it, for, heard it here first, people about this project that he's working on and he needs help. And that is really what this show is all about. So please tell us about the word interdependence. Why is it so important to you? Right. Well, first I have to admit that I didn't come up with this idea. I first heard it written about by uh, Tom Sullivan, who is a uh, musician, entertainer, filmmaker, world traveler who happens to be blind. And that's the way he introduces himself. Uh, nice. And he wrote about in his book, um, 
seeing, uh, hearing lessons, things I learned in the dark. And he wrote about interdependence. And then a couple of years ago, I gave a talk at a conference where my title was uh, The Power of Asking for Help and Accepting Help When Offered. And when it was over with, one of the other speakers came up to me, a fellow named Alex Sanfilippo, who I've been real good friends with ever since that day. And he said, uh, you could have also titled that Interdependence versus Independence. So basically, I think mm. that a, a lot of people get into trouble because they are overly focused on independence, on doing everything themselves. This belief that if you don't, the belief if you can't do it all by yourself and do it smoothly, that there's something wrong with you, that you are a failure because there are all these people out there in the world who, whenever you see them online, it's just them. There's no team. There's no, there's no backup band. There's, it's just them. And they make it look like it's so easy to do everything by themselves. And the truth is most of them have teams, staffs, or they have volunteers or they've got friends or family members that are helping them out behind the scenes, but they don't tell anybody. It's kind of like the, the wizard of Oz when, you know, you see the great, big, uh, powerful, terrifying wizard until the little puppy dog pulls the curtain away and you see the little short guy sitting back there behind it. And it's kind of like that in blogging and podcasting and writing and speaking and pretty much any of the creative pursuits as, as well as people who are doing online businesses. People yeah. don't let you see the ones that are helping them. So people have this fear. And because they have the fear of looking foolish, they decide they have to do it by themselves. And the truth of the matter is we weren't meant to do important things all alone. It's <laughs> so, it is so much more fun when we allow people to be part of our journeys and we get there a whole heck of a lot faster when we allow people to, to come along with us for the ride. For example, when I wrote my first book, uh, I was having trouble going through the publishing process with Amazon. And a woman who had helped me with a problem on my blog, Lorraine Regularly, uh, at wordingwell.com, reached out to me and said, Max, I would love to help you publish your book. Well, I like to tell people I would have eventually published my book, but it would have taken longer and it wouldn't have been as good. It wouldn't have been as visually yeah. appealing because I would have I would have edited it based on you know what I could hear with my screen reader rather than arranging blocks of text on the page or on the screen so that it it looks good to people when they're considering buying. And as far as the cover art, I wouldn't have had no idea how to come up with a cover image all by myself. So I could have published the book. I could have published all my books, but mm -hmm. they wouldn't have been as good. They would have taken longer. And the truth of the matter is, is there have been people who have been inspired and motivated and challenged by my books. So I would have been doing those people a disservice if I had postponed the, publishing those books out of pride out of you know reluctance to ask for help yeah. or to let people help me that have reached out to offer so interdependence is basically uh deciding that you are willing to let other people help you accomplish your goal and your dream and to do it quicker and with more joy mm -hmm. and the funny thing about this is for me as a blind person and somebody who knew he was going to be losing his vision, I was always taught from by my family and by my teachers, Max, don't ever be afraid to ask for help. People will want to help you. And that right yeah. there is really true because think about how good you feel when you help somebody else who can do nothing for you but say thank you. It makes you feel good, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you Absolutely. when you when you carry a neighbor's garbage out, you feel like a superhero, you know. And so they, they, they said, you know, Max, people will want to help you. And if you don't let them or don't ask them, you're going to make things harder on yourself. So I grew up with a whole different attitude towards asking for help or asking for opportunities. And so I actually consider it one of my superpowers now that I am, if, if there, I, I won't say shameless because there's no shame in doing it. Mm -hmm. But if there was a word that means that I have absolutely no fear of going up to anybody in person or online and asking them to help me accomplish my next goal, that's, mm -hmm. that's what I would be. So uh, I grew up that way. I've, I've implemented that in my life. I do my best to teach it to other people. And I think I've finally come up with an expression that will help free people from this fear they have of asking for help. And here's what I tell them. Okay. I'm going to say this twice because every time I've ever said it before, they always ask me to repeat it. So uh, when, you <laughs> <laughs> when you refuse to ask, you rob the other person of the joy they would have received.
from helping you. So think about that. When you refuse to ask for help, you rob the other person of the joy they would have received from helping you. So in effect, you're making somebody else's day harder. You're making their day less less fun by not asking them for help, by not asking them for information, experience, knowledge that they have that they've been building up for years. And they would love it if somebody came along and said, hey, I'm really struggling. I know you're the expert on this. I know you know everything about this. Would you please help? Yeah. You know, so that's uh, that's this whole thing about asking for help. And, you know, you extend it out a little bit farther as far as asking for opportunities. A lot of people think, well, if I ask somebody for the opportunity to come on their podcast, they're going to think I'm egotistical. Like, I think my stuff is really good and and they need to have me on their show or there's something wrong with them. You know, it just that's the that's the the feeling a lot of people get when they try to send a query email. But the but again, how do you know that that podcast host wasn't waiting for you to send them any, that particular email that you wouldn't be perfect for them? You know, um, when I first went to New York City in 2016, I went because I won a competition from Amtrak as one of the writers in residence. And as I was reading the instructions to fill out the form, I was reading the accolades of the previous winners. And it was saying things like had had play uh, produced off Broadway, uh, 11 Amazon bestsellers, uh, screenplay uh, approved by Netflix or whatever. You know, these people had these great things behind their name that had won it a year before, two years before. Right. (laughs) And I started saying, you know, Max you don't belong here. You're not qualified. But I decided to go back to what I usually always do and what my daddy taught me. He always said, you know, Max, if you don't ask, they can't say yes. So I filled out the form. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) Yeah. Right. right. You know, filled out the form, sent it off to them, forgot about it. Six months later, they called me up almost in the middle of the night from a blocked phone number. And at first I thought they were pulling my leg. I thought it was one of my family members playing a joke on me or something. Right. But it turned out, yeah, it was them. And they had picked me out of thousands of, of other applicants to be one of the 24 winners that year. And and I decided to use my. But, you know, it's one of those things I had to get past the feeling of either, you know, who the heck am I or I'm not qualified. It'll be one of those two feelings whenever it comes time for you to ask people for opportunities like to contribute to a book or be on a podcast or uh you know, maybe a news article, whatever that opportunity is. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to sing backup for somebody, whatever, you know, those feelings will come out. It will either be, I think too much of myself or, you know, those other people are way better than me. And so that's now. So uh, so, let me ask you this now, because the only thing I can hear about this is that I can hear that, hear people chiming in about this, about asking. Yeah. Once you start asking for help, that can somehow bring a cost because, you know, say, if I, you know, I need help with my Facebook ads. I need help with it. But yeah, you can get a, you can get a plethora of, of people responding to you, but that's going to cost you money. And what if people don't have the money for the help? I mean, if help doesn't always come for free. So how, what, what do you say to that, Maxwell? Well, I would say that, yeah, the help doesn't always come without a cost, but I've found from my own experience and the experience of, of quite a few other people that I know okay. that if you ask with a sincere heart and let people see that you really need it, that maybe the answer will come with a price. But I can't tell you how many times in my lifetime people have seen me asking for help and they either have help for free or they have helped in exchange for things that I'm good at that they're not or who have offered me payment plans or have offered to do it for less than they would usually charge anybody else to do it. Uh, a lot of times we have the ability to, uh, to pay for those things. We may just have to pay for them in effort, in sweat, or you know, pro- by providing a service you're good at. Mm-hmm. We all have things that we're good at or that we like doing that other people hate. I mean, so... Uh, yeah, there there can be a cost, but a lot of that really depends on how you ask and where you're asking. Because so, so, yes, yeah, so, so let's 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 dive into that right there. You say about how you ask. Because so, do you have a 
a special scripting or a way you say it? I mean, you said it right now on this podcast, you know, just for, very, <laughs> very, 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 you know, nonchalantly. But do you, is there a strategic way of asking for help that you, that you learned over the years that you can share All with right. us? All right. Well, first, it helps if when you decide to ask, you can find somebody that you maybe already have the beginnings of a connection with. Yeah. If if you know them or know them well enough to uh, to 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 message them through Facebook or send them an email or if you can if you can do that to start getting to know them, that helps a lot. But I find the most important thing is to let the other person know that you sincerely want to move forward, yeah. that this is the goal I'm trying to achieve. This is the uh, this is the problem I'm having. This is the kind of help that I think I need. And of course, you know, I believe that you are the best person to to help me with that. And then another thing that really helps is if you get a reputation of showing gratitude. And I like to say that gratitude is more than just saying thank you. In a lot of cases, there are people out there who get they get asked a lot. You know, people ask them all the time for things and, you know, quite often they will provide their time or experience, but a lot of times they provide their time or experience. And then the person that's asked them for the help just blows off their advice or their suggestions and doesn't really <laughs> implement it. So, so, yeah. so it helps if you get a so reputation you of, you know, if you got a reputation of, you know, somebody who's like, okay, I asked, you know, say I ask you for for help creating a better intro for my podcast. And you go, okay, sure, I'll help you. Uh, what are you doing now? Show me what you, you know. And we 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 work and you say, okay, Max, these are the three or four things I think you need to do to, to create a really compelling intro based on your brand. And mm -hmm. then I basically, then you look at my podcast three, three weeks from now or three months from now, and I'm still doing it exactly <laughs> the same way I used to do it. Are you going to want to help anybody else? All right. And, right. you know, and will anybody else want to help me? So it really helps if you can build a relationship before you ask, or if you already have a little bit of an acquaintance with the person, it helps if you have a history of showing gratitude and, and taking the advice you get and running with it. And it also helps if you get a reputation for promoting the heck out of the person who helped you. Cause a lot of the, those people, they, they do offer services. They do it. They do it for paying clients right. and they won't ask me, they won't ask me to promote them, but, uh, you know, I'm a carny kid. I'm a promoter at heart. So yeah. I know one of the valuable things I can do for somebody to say thank you is to put, uh, and I will admit that I probably get a little more help than other people would because of the disability. But, you know, if, if I didn't follow through, if I didn't ask sincerely, if I didn't show progress, if I didn't show gratitude, if I didn't do those things, people would stop helping me. They, you know, and, I honestly know, and I wish more people believe this, and I think I think some people do. I think you're probably one who gets it, that I would not be here at this point, this far from where I started, if it weren't for a lot of people who decided to help me when they really didn't have any any reason to help me other than, you know, their personal makeup and the and the compelling nature of my story in the way I asked. Right. Right. I I'm glad you're saying this. I, I got a quick question because um, I think sometimes people think of think asking is a sign of weakness, where you know you don't want to think you don't want people to think that you are not Superman, you know, you know <laughs> in what you do, right? You think you want people to think that you're the you're the greatest at what you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, how, how do you deal with that when you, you people think that you know it's it's it sucks to ask people at times? I say, think about the person you're going to ask. Go track down their personal bio, see where they started. I guarantee you that a large percentage of the people that you are impressed by online right now were once at a point where they were where they had to ask for help or encouragement or support or a kick in the butt. Um, I'll give you a good example. I recently interviewed John Lee Dumas. They call him JLD, the yeah. uh, entrepreneur on fire guy. Yeah. I kind of I kind of backed into it because I assumed that he had never struggled in his life and he called me out <laughs> on that. And, but I mean, he, and before I interviewed him, I'm start, I start looking at his bio. I start watching some of his old videos before he became famous. 
and you know, here's a guy he lost buddies in combat. The first time he pressed record on a microphone, he he was shaking the papers in his hand so so bad that the the guest he had scheduled told him he either needed to quit that or he'd have to cancel being the first guest on on Entrepreneur on Fire. And this is a guy; he's a legend in our business now. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't is. think he's ever been. <laughs> But there are lots of people like that. If you look at them now, you think, well, you know, if I admit that I need help, I'm going to look weak. Well, trust me, those those rock stars, they all they were all weak at one point. They mm-hmm. all, you know, they may have had money so they could hire somebody instead of having to ask for help. They they may have had people in their community already that they could reach out to, to for particular uh, services. But if you, you know, look at these people, most of them didn't come out of the womb the person they are now. And a lot of the people that are really leading the way, especially in the in business coaching and personal development, a lot of these people are who they are because they went through some serious adversity. They lost businesses. They lost loved ones. They they lost fellow comrades. They uh, they lost jobs and homes. A lot of people that are that are really doing it now, they remember when things weren't as good as they are now. There are very few successful coaches, speakers, podcasters who don't have an origin story. And I encourage mm-hmm. people to remember that when they're scared about asking uh, for help because it'll make them look weak. But remember, the, these uh, these great people, they were once where you are. Yeah. Three months from now, you may be where you are. You may be where they are. And somebody may be asking you. They may Somebody may take the courage <laughs> to go, hey, Max, or, you know. Or hey Brian, uh, I'm starting my podcast and I'm not liking my my subscribers or my downloads. Would you, you know? So uh, don't forget the people that are rock stars now weren't rock stars in the beginning, and someday you're going to be the person that other people look to and ask for help. So I hope we eventually get past this idea that it's weakness to ask for help. Mm. That it really is strength. It takes courage. It takes real courage to ask for help. And if you can do it and make it a habit, it's like when you, you know, like in the, in the science fiction movies, when the, when, you know, when the spaceships go into warp drive or the, in Star Trek, when they go into, when, you know, when they go into warp drive, they're going faster than the speed of light. Sometimes it's that way with your business. Once you decide that you don't have to do everything by yourself, that you don't have to be afraid to invite other people to be part of your journey. Yeah, I totally agree. It's something that I kind of try to hammer as much as possible. And this pretty much a lot of that is what this podcast is all about with the Authority Project. When you're building something, you cannot build you cannot build it alone. You cannot build your house <laughs> by yourself. No, no. I mean, you can try. You can try your best you can. <laughs> but, you, I mean, there's and one a house, thing, right. And a house is a perfect example. In order to build a house, you have to have somebody who knows about concrete. That's the foundation. Right. Then you have to have somebody who can set the uh, the frame, who can frame the outside uh, skeleton of the house or building. That can be wood, or it can be steel. You know. Right. Then you have to have people that can do the uh, drywall, the electrical work, the right. lighting, wa- uh, plumbing, sewage, air conditioning, heating. There's so many things that go into building a house. Would right. and very few people uh, would try to build a house all by themselves. Right. So I think building a house is a perfect example. And, you know, starting a blog or a podcast is a great example, too, because think about this. You know, yeah, you have to find the courage to press record and upload your audio. But, you know, most people, they have to have a website or a social media place where people can find their podcast. You know, they have to write about it and promote it. They have to, to share, you know, on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. Some people edit their podcasts. Uh, you know, you have to upload them. You have to write the the show description. If you have guests, you have to send out queries or, you know, sign up to a website where people query you. And then you have to go through all those people who want to be on a great show and, you know, and say yes to the ones that are perfect and, you know, find the courage to say no to the (laughs) ones that aren't perfect yet. You know, there's just so many things that go into a blog or a podcast and we really can't do them all ourselves. Uh, And it's difficult especially in the beginning, it's difficult to find the money to pay people to do all those things. Even if you get people on fiber or Upworks or uh, have na- relatives that will, you know, will cut you a break on the price. You, there's still just so much to be done to get started. And of course you want to, 
you want to avoid overwhelming yourself by doing, you know, what you can do now and focusing on, on the short term more, more so than the long term. So, you know, really you have to ask for help. Now I do want to make a comment about asking because a lot of people think that when I say asking for help, I mean specifically uh, sending an email or making a phone call or maybe getting on, on zoom or Snapchat or something. But we ask in a whole lot of other ways. You know, we uh, we pray. There's meditation. You know, you can use affirmations and the law of attraction where you, you know, you think about something. Uh, lots of people will create a vision board and put images of the things they want to accomplish or the, the things they need to, to do in order to accomplish those goals. So th- that's that's one way. Another way is, is when you're struggling, a lot of times things that you need will creep into your language. You'll be leaving a comment on somebody's blog or posting something to Facebook, and you won't realize it. You won't notice that you have mentioned that you need X in those posts or comments. But there are people out there who either have gotten to know you or who are intuitive by nature who will say, you know, he looks like he could really use help with something yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know we just we don't realize the ways we tell people what we need yeah. uh besides straight up asking for it but there are people out there who are watching and listening and the more we can uh be vulnerable the more we can let more of us show to the rest of the world the more likely those people are to come along and now yeah. here's what i like to call the graduate level course of asking for help and that mm-hmm. is accepting help when it's offered. And I kind of got out of sequence <laughs> here. <laughs> um, okay. Because if you think it's hard to ask for help, just imagine, you know, you're minding your own business. Somebody comes along and they go, uh, I, I want to help you. Uh, I want to help you launch your blog or, or man, I want to help you uh, change your website theme. They come yeah. along and offer you and you're like, who the heck does he think he is or she is? I don't need their help. And by the way, why don't you go help somebody who needs it? You know, so a lot of times there is more ego in being offered help than there is, you know, than you have to overcome to ask for it, in my opinion. And so that's what I was talking about before, how we ask for help in lots of ways that we don't really think about. But so, you know, you're asking and some of us ask a lot without thinking about it, without knowing it. So when somebody comes along and offers to help you, you have to realize I must have done something where I put it out into the world that I needed help. And then remember this, just like you have to have courage to ask for help. They had to have even more courage to offer to help somebody just, you know, without being directly asked. And if you want to continue to grow and move forward and to move forward uh, more quickly, when people come along and offer to help you, you have to really think about that other person. I mean, how much how much strength did it take for that person to reach out to an, a, a total stranger or somebody they barely know and offer to help them knowing that they would probably meet with resistance? And as long as we can put the other person's thoughts and feelings uh, more into our mind than, than how we feel about ourselves because of it, then we'll notice those opportunities when they come along. We'll take advantage of them. And then one other thing in that same area is, a lot of times people come in our lives to help us Mm -hmm. and we don't take advantage of it because they don't fit the mold of the person we were expecting. And, you know, there's a famous proverb that says when the teacher, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Well, the one thing more people need to know is, yeah, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, but that does not mean the teacher is going to look like a teacher. Mm. The teacher may be your garbage man. He may be a person sitting next to you on the bus going to work and back. You know, it may be the guy who comes to your house to fix your cable. You just never really know when you're going to run into that person who has who has wisdom to share with you that will help you either, you know, solve a problem that you have now or maybe realize that there's more inside you than what you thought, that you're capable of more than you thought. So. You know, you have to keep your heart and mind open all the time for those teachers that are going to come into your path or if you want to think of them as angels because they show, as the Alabama song says, they show up in so many places and wear so many faces and we really don't know where we're going to meet those teachers. And they generally do not look like teachers. I love it. I love it. So 
Uh, I just want to ch- get, get in some comments here that were coming through uh, from uh, Eric Patrick Thomas saying, great to see Max Brown on here. We virtually met him through Super Joe Pardo. He also says, we had a friend that was losing his eyesight and they were running business and needed help seeing iPad screen. We asked Maxwell for help and he gave us lots of great information on assistive technology. He also says, regarding your comments, pride stands in the way for someone to ask for help. You have to get humble. Then it says pride stands in the way for someone to ask for help. Yeah, you know, same, same thing. So pride stands yeah, in the way. Yeah. In the way of, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, and I, and I like Eric. I'm looking forward to having him on my podcast. Um, he's in the middle of doing a string of podcasts. Uh, I think the goal is to do 27 of them in the next month. I forget the event he's celebrating, but uh, if, if he hasn't already asked about being on your show, you should definitely reach out to him. He's a, He's uh he survived a gunshot. He has been in a wheelchair. He created a clothing line. He's produced music for many artists in I think the Detroit area. He's just an amazing person who yeah. I'm very blessed to have gotten to help a very small little bit a, a year ago. Awesome. And I'm and I'm serious. If you if if you have a spot, you need yeah, to he, get he's a hold actually, of him. He's actually got a hold of me this weekend. Oh, and he, he he will be on. Um, down the line for sure. Yeah, I he got a hold of me for sure. So that is already a done deal. Oh, um, there you go. I'm, you know, <laughs> and, and, and that's the you know that's the thing. We you know I really didn't have the answer to his question, but I knew some people who might, and I made some introductions. And I, uh, you know, I've I've asked about him a couple of times to see how he's doing, and we almost got him on my podcast last year, but then I had some some other stuff that was was going on in my business and. We uh, kind of let it slide, but I was very happy to see him in, in Joe Pardo's group this week as part of a virtual conference I was speaking at. And so looking forward to getting him scheduled on what's your excuse as well. And uh-huh. and he's and he's one of those guests who reminds me that, you know, Max, your story really isn't all that impressive, but it is your story. And you've inspired <laughs> so many people by telling it. But, you know, I have real comparison. I don't have comparison eyes often. But Mary, Eric, Eric is one of those guys who, you know, like, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, and, you know, in the beginning, when I first people first started telling me that my story was inspiring, I had difficulty accepting them and, and actually starting to uh, to go into to sharing my story more because I had seen some of these, uh, you know, very famous visually impaired people out there who had done, you know, much more difficult things than I have. Uh, like Eric Wehemir, who's climbed Everest, and uh, Rachel Skidoris, who completed the Iditarod, and and Tom Sullivan, who I mentioned earlier. But you know, eventually, people said, you know, Max, uh, you have a built-in excuse. If you decided you wanted to sit on the couch and uh, watch TV and eat junk food, nobody would say nothing about it. But the fact that you show up when you have an excuse really encourages all the other people who don't have a a built-in thing that keeps them from accomplishing their goals and yet they don't take any action and, and sleepwalk through their lives. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, Eric is, is just one of those people. It's a great reminder to focus on your own journey and to tell your own story. And really something I like to make sure I mention often is don't wait until you believe your story is good enough to start sharing it because you could be robbing people of the opportunity of changing lives by letting people know what you've gone through and how you've overcome your own personal struggles. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I have one last question for you before we get out of here. All right. Um, um, oh yeah. Eric, Eric Patrick Thomas says, says 23 podcast shows by the end of the year to celebrate 23 years. Okay. Um, is 23 years um, since the injury. He's looking forward to it. Maxwell for sure. All so, right. um, Last question for people, um, and I, I don't want to say people like you, but people people who 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 have seen your story, they want to they want to do the same things you're doing. They want to to be as productive and successful, or or, or however you want it. But they're going around the same lines, the same your same journey, and they see you, and they see how well you've you 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 you've done for for. For your, not only yourself but for others that you serve, can you give them just some simple things that some must have, some some must dos to be an authority in your space? Well, one thing that comes to my mind is uh, an old adage in baseball, and they say whenever you ask a 
famous home run hitter, how they did it. They will always say they never tried to hit home runs. They only tried to hit the ball hard and let the rest of it take care of itself. So, you know, as far as becoming a personality or a brand or anything like that, I would say it comes down to just doing the work, living your own story and your own message and letting people decide to to like you and emulate you or or not, because there's, you know, over eight billion people in the world there's still only a small fraction of the world that's actually sharing their stories openly to encourage others. So I would say, you know, just worry about being you and living your best life. Let the rest of it take care of itself. But as far as practical things go, Mm -hmm. um, I would say every day do at least one thing, no matter how small. And in fact, in the beginning, small things have more valuable, more value than the bigger accomplishments. But do one thing every day, no matter how small, to move you closer to your goal. Uh, Pick one thing that you're doing now at least once a week that isn't helping or serving your purpose and stop doing it. Uh, Mm. Reach out to at least one person and ask them to become part of your community. Because as we all know, we are the sum of the people we associate with as the you know, as the Bible says, the ones walking with the with the wise will become wise. So mm-hmm. reach out to at least one new person. And that person could be me because I'm always in the market for a new friend and connection to see where that's going to take me and, and the other person. And, you know, at the end of the, the most important thing is find at least one thing to feel good about, or let's say one thing to feel grateful for. Awesome. Awesome. I, I, I appreciate that. It's just incredible stuff. I'm glad I'm glad you came on here because it's just the perfect, perfect type of um, content for the audience to understand that you can't do this thing alone. I kind of I try to hammer it in. But, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes your message dulls the ears. So I'm glad somebody <laughs> else came in here to to confirm what I've been trying to say all along. Yeah. So yeah. I, and, I, it's, <laughs> and, it, and it is so true. It's not just that, you know, we we aren't meant to do this by ourselves. It's yeah. meant to be a, a journey, a team effort. I mean, yeah. you look at you look at some of the great fiction that's ever been written about, you know, big adventures. You hardly ever see it. I mean, it's one person all by themselves. I mean, uh, other than other than uh, the guy in the movie uh, Castaway, I can't even think of a really <laughs> good film. Where there wasn't, you know, friends, enemies, uh, you know, one of the, I think one of the reasons why The Hobbit is such a compelling story is because, you know, it starts out with the guy who has to be dragged out of his hole. And by the end of the story, he's saving his 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 uh, his friends that traveled with him or, yeah. you know, one of the reasons why so many of the, the biblical stories ha- are so compelling, because, you know, one, they're honest and two, you hardly ever see somebody doing it by themselves. Now, quite often that other help for them is got, comes from God, but still the best stories are not solo stories. The best adventures are not solo adventures. Mm. And the most successful people in the world, very, very, very few of them are totally solo acts doing it all by themselves. This is, it's more fun. You're going to get there quicker. You're going to struggle less. You're going to pull out less hair. So maybe you'll have more of it when you get to be my age. Uh, (laughs) So so I'm I'm glad to help you make the point. And I hope uh, more people not only get it, but start doing it and start telling other people, hey, those people who look like they're a a one man band doing it all by themselves. Don't listen to them. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, Eric, one, one last comment from him says great interview great start of the week monday motivation <laughs> yes so please tell us right now where people can find you after the after the show right week. yeah they can go to the blind blogger.net they can also send an email to just ask at the blind blogger.net they can ask alexa and google to play the blind blogger or play what's your excuse if they want to listen to the podcast Nice. They can also find the, the this What's Your Excuse show on Roku at Knob TV, K-N-O-B dash TV. But like a good entrepreneur, everything always goes back to the website. So whatever, if you want to know anything about me or what I'm up to, go to the blindblogger.net. Awesome. And for those who are itching to learn more about building your, your authority platform, 
please go to the authorityletter.com, get on the list, join the list and build your platform. We're here to help you out as best as we can with even more information going forward as we finished our eight week digital product giveaway this weekend. Um, there will be more giveaways, I promise people. You mean um, I missed you mean I missed being part of the giveaway? <laughs> missed it. Oh well, it look, well, look, well look, let's 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 call it let's call it audible here for for anybody that's listened all the way through to the end, okay? Okay. I, I offer an eight week course where I teach people how to be the next rock star podcast guest. It's interactive. Uh, it includes question and answer sessions and appearance on my podcast and four show bookings along with uh, social media promotion awesome. of their interviews. It's a great thing. It's a thousand dollar product on my website. And for anybody that had, I don't know how you usually give stuff away, but if, but the only people that qualify are the ones that listen all the way to the end. Okay. You figure out who gets the, who gets it. I'm going to give away one for free because I want to help somebody tell their story. Uh, to me, there are so many people who have great stories. They want to do podcasts or the radio shows, or they want to do guest posts. They don't know where to start. And, you know, to, if to teach people from my, you know, seven years experience doing this on both sides of the mic and, and help them grow and help them share their stories so the rest of the world can be inspired by it. That's what I live for. So you figure out who I'm going to work with and let me know. Okay. So let's, let's just do this. Whoever makes a comment um on on this on this on this um post uh make a comment there and we'll we'll pick a name out of the hat for people who want to who want to take on this thousand dollar course um value that a thousand dollars and what, what's the name of the course again just it's to make called, sure it's called eight weeks to podcast guest rock star and if they want to look at the actual course then go to the blindblogger.net slash eight weeks the number eight okay i sure write them down here so that people know i appreciate that um, no i'm i i enjoy doing it if you know one of these days i'm going to get to be one of the big boy podcasters and i'm going to create a special link for when i want to give it away and uh have one for each podcast host but for now you know you just do it the best way you can at the moment and you get better going forward so in fact you know not only is is offering this going to help me meet a new person with a great story but I think it really teaches my overall approach to life, which is you do it, do it as good as you can do it today. If you find out tomorrow you screwed it up. Well, then tomorrow you do it differently. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. So anybody who wants to get on the eight weeks to podcast guest rockstar, um, just say pick me and either my Facebook profile, YouTube, the Periscope or, or, or Twitter or my Facebook um, business page. So I'm sorry. I hope I didn't just make your life horrible. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> Say so pick me on 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 this post, and and we'll we'll figure out. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll go from there on that. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you so much, uh, Maxwell, for coming through here and letting us. Well, and, thank and, you. And, and I I appreciate you having me. Also appreciate you uh, squeezing me in when I had a little trouble with my with my scheduling, and just to just to make sure I don't forget. Um, when I come on a show, I, real, I, I realize that you put a lot of your heart, your time, your energy, and your money into giving me a platform to share my story. Without people like you, there would not be a the blind blogger or what's your excuse. So thank you so much for having me. And uh, please keep up all the amazing work you're doing with your show. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Maxwell. And I wouldn't have a, a great enough show if it wasn't for a fine guest like yourself coming through and showing their authority. So I appreciate you so much as well. Um, and the, I just want to let everybody else know that you are here. You are the project. We want to attach authority to your name so you can sell more of what you're great at because the world needs your gift. All right. Please share it, build it, and they will come. And that's a wrap for this this, uh, this episode of the Authority Project. We will see you on the next one very shortly. Peace and God bless. And that's a wrap for this episode of the Authority Project. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you like what you heard, we want to hear from you. Subscribe, rate, and give an honest review. Share and tell your friends so they can hear too. And for even more authority building tactics, be sure to sign up at theauthorityletter.com. Get free weekly content and ongoing digital product giveaways to help you on your entrepreneurial journey. We certainly hope you got a key takeaway or maybe an aha moment from today's broadcast. Just for Remember, it's your authority. Build it. 
share it, and they will come. Until next time.